Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and for today's video I wanted to sit down and talk about all of the upcoming book releases that I'm super excited for. We are already in May and it's getting towards that midway point in the year and there have already been so many incredible book releases this year. But if you are looking to add some more book releases to your calendar then definitely keep watching this video. I love the books that I'm going to be talking about even though I have not read them yet. I just I'm so excited to get them in my hands. I will say majority of these books are in the romance and fantasy genre. I've just accepted that that's what I like to read. I'm a romance and fantasy girly. It is what it is. I do have one literary fiction slash thriller book in this list and it's the first book I'm going to be talking about but it's mainly fantasy and romance. So if you're also a fantasy and romance girly definitely have these books on your radar because I think they are going to be really incredible when they come out. As I am going through the books that I'm going to be talking about today of course I will put the publication date on the screen so if you are interested in adding these books to your calendar you have the date to do that. Let me grab my laptop because that's where I'll like my notes are and my train of thought is not all over the place because as you guys know if you've watched my other videos I tend to ramble so we're trying to be a little bit more concise okay in, in my videos so we're trying a new a new thing so the first book that I'm so so excited to get my hands on is Little Rot by Akweke Emezi this cover is gorgeous I already love Akweke Emezi's covers but this one just is so captivating it captured my attention when I first saw it and I was like I need this book just to just have on my shelf regardless of if the book is good or not I just need it on my shelf this like I said is the literary fiction slash thriller novel by Akweke Emezi. I read this author's book last year my first time reading their book. It was The Death of Vivek Oji and it was hands down one of my favorite books in 2023. I fell in love with this author's writing style and the way that they were able to tell such a difficult story. I just fell in love with it. This book however is a little bit darker than The Death of Vivek Oji and their other popular book which is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. That book is a little bit more on the romance side of things but Little Rot is a lot more darker and more violent than those two books. It's set in a city in Nigeria and is about five people whose lives descend into chaos and violence over the course of a weekend and they're essentially brought to the face of corruption and power and I think it's going to be really interesting to see the way that Akweki Amezi handles this type of writing and this type of genre. I don't think they've ever written in the thriller genre before so I think it'll be really interesting to see how they're going to do that and I'm very interested to see how this is all going to play out. All of the reviews that I've seen so far with this book have talked a lot about content warnings and trigger warnings so if this is a book that you are interested in reading and putting on your list of books that you want to check out then I would definitely check out some of those content and trigger warnings but I'm excited for this one I think it's going to be really really good and I cannot wait to get my hands on it I'm so so excited for this book the next book I have is so this is war by Megan Quinn this oh I'm stupid. A Little Rock comes out June 18th. So the next book I have is So This Is War by Megan Quinn. This is a romance and it comes out June 25th. This is her last book in the Vancouver Agitator series which is her hockey romance series and you will notice there's a trend with some of the romances on this list so you'll see. But this is a interconnected series and it follows a group of friends on this hockey team, this very popular hockey team and each of them have their own story and how they fall in love with another character and this is the last book in that series and I've enjoyed the series so much. It's so funny and romantic and spicy and I feel like Megan Quinn just balances all three really really well. It's definitely a series that if you're looking for something in the summertime, something that's really light and that's not too stressful and emotional, even though sometimes it can get a little bit emotional, then I think this is a really great series. The book that's before this book, I think it's This Is Not Okay or This Close To Okay or something like that. That book is so funny. I don't know what it is but Megan Quinn puts the comedy in romantic comedy. Her books actively make Make me laugh out loud. But So This Is War follows Hosey who is kind of the goofball of the group and he's definitely the one that I think holds the group together. Like he's the one that pushes a lot of the guys out of their comfort zone and kind of helps some of the guys you know get out of that fear of being in a relationship with somebody or the fear of putting themselves out there. It's gonna be incredible to see his story and kind of how the guys are gonna help him because he's been helping them a lot. So how the guys are gonna help him kind of get together with his love interest. We don't know too much about this book yet. There's not a blurb out but some of the tropes for it are coach's daughter, enemies to lovers, age gap, boss slash assistants, hockey romance. So if you're looking for a hockey romance this is definitely the series for you. If you are also a big fan of Megan Quinn this series if you haven't read it is just it's one of my favorite by her. I've read a couple of her books and this is definitely 
definitely one of my favorite series by her. The next book I have is a novel love story by Ashley Poston. This is another romance and it comes out June 25th as well. The main character in this book is headed to a book club but when her car breaks down she finds herself in the town of her favorite romance book series which is such a great concept because imagine if you were to put me in any Talia Hibbert books I would lose my mind. Put me in actor age Eve Brown I genuinely think I would lose my mind. So that is just such an incredible concept to begin with but she's essentially trapped in the story that she's in because the author that was writing it has passed away and she believes that she's there in this story now to finish it but there's a grumpy bookstore owner who doesn't want her to finish it and I think it's going to be really interesting to see how that all plays out and their dynamic with each other. Similar to The Seven Year Slip which is the book that this author wrote last year I believe and I read that book loved it. There is that element of magical realism and I really like how she kind of depicts magical realism and uses magical realism to tell her stories and how that's interwoven throughout the romance so I'm really excited to read this book. I have such not high expectations but I'm really really like the seven year slip was the first book I read by this author so I was immediately captivated and I just loved loved her writing style and she writes very similarly to Emily Henry. I hear a lot of really good comparisons between Ashley and Emily Henry and as far as how they write characters and how yes there is a romance involved but you get so much from the characters as individual people and you see their growth and journey and I think that a novel love story is just going to be incredible. It's just going to be incredible. I just, I can't wait to get this book in my hands. And then another book that is also coming out June 25th. I need you guys to check on me when June 25th comes around because we have three releases on June 25th. I'm not going to be good. I'm not going to be well. But this is Children of Anarchy and Anguish by Imagine being loud and wrong. It's Children of Anguish and Anarchy. I told me at a yummy. This is a young adult fantasy and this is the third book in the legacy of Orisha trilogy. Children of Blood and Bone is the first book and then Children of Virtue and Vengeance is the second book. I read the first book, loved it. I have not read the second book and I need to read the second book because this book comes out in a little over a month and I need to catch up before this book comes out. Children of Blood and Bone is a West African mythology inspired young adult fantasy and the first book follows our main character Zeli who is on a journey to use her magic to restore the magic of her people and challenge the oppressive monarchy who seeks to destroy her magic and her people's magic forever. On her journey she's joined by her brother and a uh, rebellious princess oh, what's her name Amari and shout out to Amari if you've read Children of Blood and Bone there's a specific scene towards the end Amari is just that girl she's not one to be played with I feel like because she's a princess people are like oh my gosh she's so like proper and this that and a third but Amari is not girls to play with like that is a strong strong woman right there and there's also two romances going on in the book series at least in the first book and they're both kind of forbidden romances so that obviously creates a very interesting tension filled dynamic between characters and it's just all around a really good series and again like I said I've read the first book I haven't read the second book I think I need to read like a Sparks Notes version of the first book before I read the second book because this series is very 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 detailed and even though it's young adult I feel like it's like a high fantasy young adult novel like it's so so detailed and immersive and just the world that Tomi Adeyemi has created with the series I think it's just absolutely incredible but I feel like there's so much time has gone by since I read Children of Blood and Bone that I've forgotten a lot of it so I definitely need to do some catching up to do before I read this but I'm super excited to get my hands on this third book. The next book I have is Fall With Me by by Becca Mack which is another hockey romance <laughs> and it comes out July 31st and this is the fourth book in the Playing for Keep series. It is an interconnected like I said hockey romance and it is such a super sweet and emotional series because it follows this really strong friend group and it's such a found family and we really get to see each of the characters fall in love with you know their love interest but we also get to see how their relationship with each other grows and how they grow as individual people but this particular book fall with me follows Jackson the team's defenseman and playboy and Lennon who is the team's photographer and their dynamic was teased at the end of unravel me which was Adam's book and y'all I'm here for it. It's definitely giving like he's trying to get her attention and she's paying him no mind and I love that dynamic. I think it's just gonna play out so well and I believe that to kind of set the book up Lennon is a runaway bride. She was supposed to get married but for some reason didn't get married and she sets off to a new city where she meets Jackson and they have a one night stand and obviously they're not planning on seeing each other ever again after that but she gets a job and is now working with his hockey team as the new team's photographer. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how it all plays out. Some of the for this are frenemies to lovers, found family, reformed playboy, 
roommates with benefits it's just incredible if you have not read the series definitely check it out i'm really excited to read it it's one of my favorite favorite series that i've read in the past couple of years the next book is the ravenous fate by Haley dennings this is a sapphic fantasy and it comes out august 6th this book is actually by a creator pages of Haley on youtube and this is really exciting because i've seen her post kind of like her writing updates on social media and the journey to getting this book published and it's so cool to kind of see the behind the scenes process and obviously you know we're getting the book in a couple of months so it's just like a full kind of circle journey moment for her but this is a young adult historical fantasy set in harlem new york in the 1920s it centers queer black girls and shines light on the ignored and lost parts of black history also i think this is a very very important thing to note there's vampires yes there are vampires when was the last time you read a book about vampires i say we need to bring vampires back and if anyone's going to bring it back it's going to be Haley. so I am looking forward to this book but she said that it's emotional and it's perfect for those who enjoy reading about vampires but also those who enjoy reading about female rage and love stories so you can definitely count me in on this book and I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a duology if I believe but definitely put this book on your calendar to check out August 6th. The next book I have is another romance. It is Daydream by Hannah Grace and this comes out August 27th. This is the third book in the Maple Hill series. First book is Icebreaker and the second book is Wildfire. I read Icebreaker last no two years ago. Really loved it. Gave it five out of five stars. I'm in the middle of reading Wildfire. I don't know why it's taking me such a long time to get through the book. It's okay so far. But this book follows Henry, which if you've read Icebreaker, I feel like Henry is the one character that everybody fell in love with and everybody has been waiting for Henry to get his own book. So we are finally getting that and I know everybody's really excited. But this follows Henry, the captain of his hockey team. Again, we're back with hockey. There's a central theme going on here. I love a good hockey romance. But he's the captain of his hockey team and Hallie or Haley, I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, but she offers to help Henry with his academics and tutors him. I remember Henry just being very, very sweet in Icebreaker, but reading Wildfire, and if you've read Wildfire, let me know if you also peep this, but he's kind of more of like a ladies man, a little bit more like a, I don't want to say playboy but he's definitely ladies man definitely a bigger flirt I feel like in wildfire so I'm really curious to kind of learning more about him his backstory and just being in his perspective and seeing his own thoughts and then of course Haley sounds absolutely adorable she is I think in the middle of writing her own book and she's kind of having writer's block and kind of part of their dynamic and I guess setup is yes she's his private tutor and is helping him with his academics but he's also offering to help her kind of get out of her writer's block by showing her new experiences if you know what I mean. So this is gonna be I feel like super cute super fun and I can't wait to read it come August 27th. Also the cover gorgeous. And then the next book I have is Air by Sabata here. This is a young adult fantasy slash romance and this comes out October 1st. Sabata here wrote An Ember in the Ashes. If you know, that book caused me a lot of pain. If you've read An Ember in the Ashes, we share the pain that that book has caused us. Like it's, there's no other way to describe that book other than pain and torture but good pain and good torture. I believe that Air is set in the same world as A Number in the Ashes, but it has new characters, of course, but hopefully we're able to see some of the old characters. And I think that the author did tease that in kind of some of the promotion for this book. Overall, I just love the way that Sabah Tahir writes. Her ability to just evoke such strong emotions out of me, whether it's pain, whether it's love, whether it's happiness, whether it's joy, whether it's just tears, like she can just pull such strong emotions out of me through her writing and her storytelling and just the way that she is committed to complete chaos and putting her characters through such a journey but I feel like it develops them in a way that I've never really seen before when it comes to other authors. She's just an incredible incredible writer and storyteller but Air this book is about three main characters so we have an orphan, a prince, and an outcast who each got their own stuff going on but are drawn together by fate and vengeance. One thing that Sabah loves is a prophecy so I guarantee you we're gonna get a prophecy in that first couple of pages. We're gonna get a prophecy as to why all three of these people who have their own stuff going on that aren't connected, how they are actually in fact connected. As their stories and their paths intertwine, I know there's gonna be pain, action, and of course a little bit of romance that she's definitely teased as she's talked about this book. But I'm so, so excited to be back into this world and I just can't wait to see what she does with this series. And then the last book that I have to talk about that I am anticipating and looking forward to in 
the next couple of months is Throne of Secrets by Carrie Maniscalco. This is an adult fantasy that comes out October 29th. This series is kind of the spin-off series that came after Kingdom of the Wicked. That is a trilogy and I completed that trilogy earlier this year which I didn't love the trilogy. I thought it was okay but I liked it enough to want to continue reading other characters that are kind of set in this world. So Throne of the Secrets is the second book in that spin-off series. The first book is Throne of the Fallen which follows Prince of Envy and then Throne of the Secrets follows Prince of Gluttony. I believe each Prince of Sin is going to have their own book within the series. I do believe they can be read as standalones but I'm going to read them in order so I definitely have to read Throne of the Fallen because I have not read that yet. But this book follows the Prince of Gluttony like I said who is trying to save his kingdom and it also follows a journalist who is determined to find out the truth and reveal that truth about Gluttony because I guess you know She's not his biggest fan, but it's definitely giving enemies to lovers, which I feel like fantasy is the perfect setting for any enemies to lover dynamic because you actually want to like kill them or like hate them. And I feel like it's just the stakes are just so much higher because it's more than just like, oh my gosh, you stole this promotion from me. It's like you've ruined my life or you've done something to hurt me or it's just I don't know. I just feel like the stakes are so much higher because we're in that fantasy setting. It definitely looks like these two characters are going to have to work together some way, somehow, and I'm really excited to see how it's all going to play out. And this one is adult fantasy, whereas Kingdom of the Wicked is more young adult fantasy, which to be honest, the last two books in Kingdom of the Wicked were not giving young adult fantasy, personally, but those were all of the books that I am looking forward to that are going to be released in the next couple of months. Again, if any of these books are on your radar, let me know down below. But if there are any other books that I didn't mention that you are looking forward to in the next couple of months, also leave those down below. I am so excited to get my hands on these books. I feel like I love having something to look forward to. And like I said, there's been so many incredible book releases that have been out so far this year and but still having the rest of the year to look forward to some other ones I feel like is really exciting. So I definitely hope that if none of these are on your radar they're now on your radar because I think they're going to be really really good but that is all I have for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure to like comment and subscribe we are also in a new setting I moved out of my apartment and I am back home I am still trying to like make my space my own as you see our bookshelf made it from Florida to Georgia and then we have my book cart and then I have another bookshelf over there so if you guys want a bookshelf tour let me know my bookshelves aren't completely done yet I still have a little bit more decorating and kind of organizing to do but if you guys want a bookshelf tour definitely let me know because I would be open to doing that but that is all I have for today's video like I said thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one bye